In this video, I'm going to teach you how to estimate the value of the pKa of an acid when you start with the Ka constant. Knowing how to estimate the value of a logarithm is a good skill to have as, you're not, as you don't always have a calculator with you. And in many instances, like in different tests, for example the MCAT, you're not allowed to use a calculator to solve this kind of problems. So in general, this technique works very well if you are taking a, a multiple choice test, which gives you the, the answers, so you have like four or five answer choices, and you're able to, to estimate a value that is close to that respective answer. If you're allowed to use a calculator, or you have a calculator nearby, you're not, you don't really need to use um, this technique, as the calculator will give you the exact number. But anyway, it's a, it's a very practical method for when you don't have it, or when you want like a quick answer. So, as I explained in the previous video, the, the formula to calculate the pKa when you start with the Ka constant is this right here. The pKa is equal to the negative logarithm base 10 of the Ka. Knowing the values of some of the basic logarithms is, is very, make, will make this technique very simple. So I listed them right here in blue. The, these are all logarithms base 10. So the logarithm base 10 of 2 is 0.3, of 3 is 0.47, and of 5 is 0.7. And these are all approximated values. So the way this technique works is that you will work with ranges. You'll have a low range value and a high range value, and your answer will be somewhere in between them. And if your ranges are too broad, you can just keep narrowing down until your answer is somewhere in between them. And I will show you how to do that. Well, we'll go over two different acids. So let's start with um, acetic acid, which is the last one here. The Ka for acetic acid is 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. So you can see that here. And we'll use the formula that I have listed here, the pKa is equal to the negative log base 10 of the Ka, which is 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. And we can do this two different ways. The first way is um, a little less exact because it just gives you the two the two ranges I mentioned, the low and the high. And the other way is by splitting in, into, diff, into two different logs and using the, the basic logs that I listed here. So let's start with the ranges. For that you want to look at the value of your Ka and you want to go higher and lower. So an easy way to do that is to use 1 and 10 as your, as your different ranges. If you use 1 we will be saying that our lower, our lower range is 1 times 10 to the negative 5 and our higher range is 10 times 10 to the negative 5 which is the same as 1 times 10 to the negative 4 and if if you find the the log of that you will get that this right here is 5 and this right here is 4 and although it might sound weird the the high number represents the low range and the low number represents the higher range so we have that our ranges that our, our number will be between 4 and 5. So if you have answers like 2, 6, 7, you can scratch those. And you you just have to focus on anything that's in between these two ranges. And so like what you do now is you look at the value of your actual Ka, which is 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. And comparing that to the ranges, that is much closer to 1 times 10 to the negative 5 than to 10 times 10 to the negative 5. So it will be on the higher range. So it will be closer to 5 than to 4. So because the number is so close to 1, we can even say that our range is four between 4.5 and 5. So a number like 4.2 would not, would not make sense as an answer. And that's how you use the, the ranging technique. As you can see in our answer, um, the pKa is actually 4.76. So that's in between our, our, our two ranges. 
And if you had that just by itself, you could have picked that as the answer, and that would have been correct. Now, if you want to have something a little more exact, we can use the technique that uses the, the basic logs. So let me just erase this right here. Okay, so we're back to the PKA is equal to the negative log of 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. And you can just split this logarithm into two different logarithms because the numbers are multiplying. So you just add them up. So you'll split it into negative log. The, the sign doesn't change in here of 1.75. And that's plus, but because our logarithm is negative, we make it negative again, log of 10 to the negative 5. And we can just solve each separately. We know that this right here is equal to 5 have plus 5 here. The the negative sign in here cancels the negative sign here making it positive. And then we're left with that the negative log of 1.75. 1 1.75 is it's very close to the log of 2 so we can approximate that and say that this can be negative 0.3. That will give us that our pKa should be somewhere close to 4.7. And the, ac the actual number is 4.76. And we don't get that just simply because we approximated the 1.75. That would make it just a little higher. And that should give you 4.76. But this answer right here is, is closer than and is in between the ranges that we got. So if you were on a multiple choice test, you could be able to pick 4.76 as the answer. And just again, this is just an estimation of the value of the pKa. If you want an, an exact answer, I, I would use a calculator as that makes it way simpler. But for a, for a quick method, you can just use the ranges or splitting the, the log into, into different parts. So that wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and found it useful. And if you did, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe to see more videos like this one. And if you have any thoughts or questions, don't hesitate asking.